Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be drawing a super cute little bunny for you guys. Um, I'm going to finish him off using some shaded pencils and I may use some of these soft chalk pastels to add a little bit of kind of fluffiness to him. But I'm going to see how we go for time and how he is looking um, after we've done the pencil. So I have a small piece of watercolour paper here. I'm not going to be using anything water soluble, but I just like to use this paper anyhow. And I'm going to go right ahead and try and figure out the spacing of where I want my bunny to be. Now, this bunny's going to look really cute because he's going to have a big head and big eyes. So I'm going to first of all get in that rough head shape. So let's start with a rough outline of a circle. It's really quite big. It's taking up almost my whole page. Now, after we've done the circle, we're going to come down and make a sort of a little squat U shape there. Can you see that? I'm just going to bring the camera a bit closer so you can get a proper look. So it's very difficult to see when I use pencil, isn't it? So we have a nice big round shape here and then a kind of a squat U shape. By squat, I mean it. it's wider at the end and it's flattening off slightly over here at the bottom. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm going to start working a little bit darker in a minute, don't worry. Let me try and zoom in a little. So we are also going to add a couple of little ears. Now it's all going to look a bit weird to start with, but I promise it'll make sense. So we're going to have one ear coming up like this, it's roughly in the middle, and then another one that's going to appear a little bit bigger because this bunny is going to be twisted slightly to one side. Hello again. Sorry, my crazy phone has decided that I am making way too many videos and it's just decided to stop recording after a couple of minutes. So that's fantastic. Let me just talk you through what you missed while I was merrily chatting away to myself and my phone wasn't working. So um, I had already done the shape of this rabbit with you. Now I've added two eyes over here. One is just coming out of the side slightly. Looks a bit weird right now, but that's because our rabbit is twisted slightly to one side. So we're seeing just a little bit of a semicircle popping out from the left-hand side of his head. Over here, we have a full circular eye, and I have just created two smaller arches within the ears, which we had already drawn together. Now, over here for the body, we've drawn a basic V shape coming in for the arms, and then just gone, then it's not quite meeting up in the middle, just leaving a little space, and then going back out to the edge of the body with an almost straight line. Same thing coming down for, for the feet, a slightly wider V, not joining up in the middle, and then it's just blending into the bottom of the rabbit there. Little tufty tail coming out on the right hand side. Now in the middle, for his nose, not quite in the middle, actually a bit more around to the left hand side, I have drawn a little V shape, small line coming down and then an upside down V shape for his nose and his mouth. So super simple design here, but it's going to look really cute and really effective. And I've been using the 8B pencil, the really dark one, to get a very dark edge around his eyes. And I have shaded very, very dark in the center, a little bit lighter towards the edge, but always with the same HB pencil, just trying to make sure I've got that nice circular shape there. I've left a little white space in both of his eyes to make it look like it's reflective and that the light is just hitting off of that over there. Now, when you're using these very thick pencils, uh, very dark pencils rather, you need to be really careful. So if you're gonna work with your hand over this, I've already smudged this slightly despite my best efforts, your hand is gonna get really dirty and then you're gonna drag it all over your page and make a whole big mess. So what you need is a piece of paper that is relatively clean on the underside and you can just place that there to rest your hand on when your artwork is getting too full of shading. You could also use a tissue or a piece of kitchen paper and just throw it away when it starts to get dirty. Another thing we're going to do when I finish this, because it's going to be very, very smudgy, take a look over here. If we use, say for example, a little bit of 8B and then we just happen to nudge it, it's going to make a big old smudgy mess. 
So what we're going to do at the end when we finish with this artwork is give it a little bit of a spray. I actually have some firm hold hairspray which does the trick but you can also use a fixative spray that you could get from an art shop. So you can also do that halfway through. If you're finding that your work is getting too smudgy to work with, you could just give it a little bit of spray. So I think we're all caught up. Let me check this is still recording. For now it is. Okay. I've deleted a whole bunch of pointless apps from my phone. So maybe that will free up the storage space. Let's have a look again. And we're going to check for the absolute darkest areas on our rabbit aside from the eyes. So another area that I think should look really nice and dark is this inside part of his ears. So I'm just gonna go around, make a little dark arch, and I'm pressing really hard, and then I'm going to start pressing a little bit lighter as I'm coming down, a little bit lighter on both sides. And then I'm gonna start shading in this area really, really dark. really dark and then just making it a little bit lighter by lifting off my pencil. Now I'm going to be using a technique called cross hatching in some of this and I'm just going to explain that for you over here. So when we want to do cross hatching what we are doing is going in one direction first and then going in the other. That's all. It just helps us to shade in an area without having a very definite line. If you're just going in one area, let me show you with a HB pencil actually, it's a little bit clearer. So if we're just shading in one area, we're going to end up with a very definite line over there, which is maybe not what we really want to have. So if you want to shade in a more gentle way, you could cross hatch over it, which creates a darker effect where you have two layers of pencil together. And then as you're bringing it down, we can just slowly lighten up and lighten up a bit more and build up till we get the effect that we want without having such a definite line. So using the cross hatching technique, good, we are still recording, I'm going to come down from the ears, getting a little bit lighter all the time. Now I don't mind with this that my pencil lines are going to show. I think that's cool, it just kind of adds to the effect. Sometimes you'll want to have a really smooth drawing where nothing shows but where none of your pencil lines show and you just want to blend them all in together but I don't mind I think this all kind of looks a bit tufty and a bit like the rabbit's fur so that's fine okay so we've done a little bit of shading on the ears now let's look at where else we think would be really dark so I think that the space underneath the chin and here in the middle of his body would be darkest because he's enclosing himself by holding his arms in and any light wouldn't really be hitting there. So being careful not to smudge my ears or my eyes, I am going to add that shape of his chin and then start shading down towards his hands. I'm not going to shade the hands yet. And I'm going to shade above his feet. I've also shaded the middle of his tummy all the way down between the area under his chin all the way down to the top of his feet there and I'm just doing the rim of his eyes and the outline of his head just a little bit darker with one of my slightly darker pencils. I think this was the 6B that I was using here. Making sure that his little nose is just filled in slightly underneath his arms is casting a little bit of a shadow so that'll be a bit darker than the top of his arms and then just filling in with a slightly lighter bit of shading um, the arms themselves and the rest of his body. Now I've just added the little tufty tail a little bit darker there it will be um, shaded darkest at the base of the tail so here you can see if I press hard and then f lift up my pencil slightly, I can create that nice flicky effect to make him look really fluffy and furry. I want him to look like a sort of a long haired, very shaggy looking little bunny. So I'm making sure that the shading around his arms, um, at the top and the bottom is super duper dark. Getting some whiskers in here on either side, just making sure they are in the right place. You can see it's not erased very well because I was using a very dark 
um, shading pencil. I think it was a 6B or, or an 8B there. And if you try to erase those, it is pretty tricky. So go easy with them. Now there's some like little uh, tufty ear whiskers at the base of his ears, just shooting up towards the uh, top of the page. And I've just been roughing up around the edge of his face a little bit too. So I think I might use uh, a couple of different shades of brown for his fur, maybe a little bit of gray. But first of all, I'm going to shade in the whole of his face using some um, different pencil strokes, so some in one direction, some in another, just to break it up and give him that overall fluffy effect. Now, some of the flicky lines that are coming out from the side of his face are really quite long, but again, that's to give that really long-haired, shaggy effect. Your bunny could be any color you like, and you can just leave it like this with pencil if you don't have chalk pastels or if you don't feel like doing this part. But I'm just adding in some really dark brown to start with. As you can see, the dark brown is all kind of mostly on one side, and then the lighter brown is mostly on the other side, so that would be the side of him that's you know really hitting the light the most. I'm adding some sort of turquoisey aqua color for his eyes. And I have a, a really light gray here, which when I go over the other colors, it really works at smudging them all together. Now, when you're working with chalk pastels, you will find they make an awful lot of dust. So I like to have a piece of paper, just a scrap piece of paper next to me that I can tip it upside down onto just to remove all of that dust. I'm just smudging it all together with my finger here and smudging out a little bit away from his face just to continue building up that really fluffy effect. So he's pretty much almost done now. I'm just going to neaten up some areas with the pencil again. I feel like around his eye needs to be a little bit darker. And just re-adding in some of those whiskers and a bit of extra tuftiness with the pencil because obviously a pencil line is much clearer and leaves a much more defined um, design than these chalk pastels. So where I really want to see those little bits of tufty hair, it's going to be much clearer if I do it with the pencil rather than just with the chalk pastels. So I'm going to make sure that I spray this with hairspray. And here he is when he's finished. And if you like this, why not try out my banana octopus drawing tutorial? Or you can even learn to draw an LOL doll. If you head over to carlyart.org, I have a whole online art school waiting for you. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I leave you today, I'm just going to whiz through some of the great artworks I have been receiving. So here is Liam's fabulous dinosaur. Here is Alice and Sam. They followed the pattern tutorial and they made these great shapes. This is Aaron's Mexican skull and Salome's Mexican skull. Aaron has also tried my Weird Owl quick draw, and so has Salome. This is a traveling paint um, artwork by Isabella. This is a really fun project to try. She's also done the food coloring color wheel. Alice and Sam have tried their Weird Owl quick draws. I just love this Weird Owl, it's super cool. This is an Ammonite drawn by Jack. Charlize has done my rainbow unicorn, but she's done a whole family of unicorns. Check that out. And a whole family of dinosaurs. And here is Violet's strawberry. Guys, I'm blown away. As always, I love your artwork. Please keep it coming.